Hello, my name is Paddy Cummins and you're very welcome to my banjo tutorial. I'm going to be focusing on the different aspects and types of ornamentation one can play on the banjo. And this is your free sample lesson and the first lesson in the series. The first lesson comprises of the conventional triplet, but before I explain exactly what the conventional triplet is, how to play it, I'm going to play a tune which demonstrates the use of the triplet quite well. It's a tune in D, it's a reel, called the Boyan Hunt. I'm going to play it at a regular speed and I'm going to add the triplets in where I find them suitable and then I'll slow it down and I'll break the tune down into various parts. So here we go with the Boyan Hunt. <laughs> The second part in the lesson now I'm going to explain to you what the triplet is, how to play it, where it's employed and why would we even use them. Well, the triplet is, is quite an important part of banjo playing because the instrument is quite new to the tradition and as such it has to adapt its own ornamentation and the triplet has become a very popular ornament to use on the banjo. There are many kinds of triplets and we'll deal with later ones as, the, as we progress through the series but for now we'll deal with the very simplest form of triplet and a triplet really is what it says on the tin, it's three notes in succession. So how do we employ them? Well it's usually to take place of a long note so if we take the tune The Boy and Hunt which we just played, I'll play the first phrase of it and you'll hear the very first note is a long note, it's held. For example The first A, it's longer, so we could just play it as is, as I played it there and, and keep the note long, but if you want to ornament it, a triplet is an option. And in order to make it a triplet, all you do is play the note three times. So instead of going, you go, again. Now, that's one place you can put a triplet, but there's no limits on where you can put a triplet. You can put triplets absolutely anywhere, but I suggest looking at the first video I played um, and using that as a guide as places to put the triplets. They're, they, they seem the most sensible place to put them for the moment before we start going into more, uh, let's say, advanced areas where we can put the triplet. Now, the next thing I want to discuss is when, when you employ the triplet, how long do you need it to last? Well, if you understand rhythm beats, a triplet is essentially a crotchet beat or one beat. So if there's any place in a tune where you find a long note or a stop gap, it's usually a place where you can put a triplet, like I explained there um, in the first phrase of the tune, but there's other places in the tune as well. For example, in, in, the, in the second or uh, second phrase of the tune, uh, you would have first phrase of course you have a long E you can employ it there as well because it's a long note it's a crotchet beat so you can just replace the E with a triplet because it's it, it fits in the same space the triplet fits in the same space as the long E note so we'd have instead of what I just played we could play And this continues on for all the long notes in the tune. Now, as far as physically playing the triplet goes, it's, it's not that difficult. The plectrum motion is a down-up 
down technique. It's, it's a down up down motion. You go down with the plec on the first on the first note of the triplet, on the second note of the triplet you go up, and on the third note you go down. So if we take the triplet at the very start of the tune, the first A, I'm playing and I'm going down, up, down, down, up, down. Now that's quite important. There are triplets you can do which use an inverted uh, plectrum motion that is starting with an upstroke. Up, down, up, up, down, up. But for the moment, let's focus on down, up, down triplets. I don't want to go too deep into the plectrum motion of a triplet just yet. Let's, let's try to get the simple bits, bits done first. Now, the plectrum motion which we're using is down, up, down. And of course, your, reel, your reels are played with a down, up, down, up plectrum stroke. So try to understand that if you do a triplet, there is two down strokes in succession. For example, let's take the first triplet again. Down, up, down. And then our next note is F sharp. We're going. So rather than keeping with the down, up, down, up, down, up motion of a reel, we're actually going down, up, down, down. So we're following the down, up, down triplet with a down stroke on the following note. This keeps us in, I suppose, it keeps us in some sort of succession and it feels natural as well. There are players, for example, Kieran Hanrahan would say that he, uh, for every down, up, down triplet he does, he follows it up with an up, down, up triplet. That's so his plectrum motion has reverted to what it started as. So if you do a triplet, you're actually inverting your plectrum motion. Don't worry too much about the technicalities of it. Let's just focus on playing the triplet at the moment. So as I say, you can employ it in those places. Um, don't be inclined to overuse the triplet though. It is a, a way of coloring the tune. It's not essential. For the, pros, for, the, for the purpose of, of this exercise, I'm going to put them in, in uh, as many opportunities as I can. I'm going to use the triplet, but by no means would I usually put them in that, that frequently. Um, but for the moment, we're going to try to put them in in, uh, in, in every given opportunity, just for, for, for the sake of practice. Now that you know what the triplet is, you can proceed to the next exercise, where I'm going to slow down the tune, the bind hunt. And we're going to work through it slowly, adding in the triplets where I feel they're most suitable. Hello and welcome to the third part of the first lesson, the free sample lesson on conventional triplets. In the last uh, part of the exercise I explained to you what the triplet was and where we would employ them. Now it's time to actually work through the tune. So using the Boyan Hunt, the reel in D as our basis, I'm going to play the first part of the tune with no triplets because remember, don't try to learn a tune with the ornamentation before you have the bare tune learnt off. Always learn the tune, the melody first. Learn the melody line first. It's very important because you need to understand the bare melody line before you start to decorate the tune. If you try to decorate the tune before you understand the bare melody line, well, you run the risk of not really learning the tune properly. So I'm going to play the tune, the first part only. I'm going to play it very slowly and you can consult the accompanying sheet music if, if you find it helpful. And we're gonna play it slowly through with no triplets, and then we'll add the triplets in later in the lesson. So, first part. Okay, so I'm going to add in some triplets now where I think that they're most necessary. Um, as I explained in my previous lesson, I would not necessarily put them in in these positions every time I play the tune, but for the purpose of this exercise, we're going to put them in wherever a long note exists, a crotchet note or a full note, a one beat note. 
Wherever one of those notes exists, I'll employ the triplet. So for the sake of this exercise, just learn the triplets this way. As we progress and we get comfortable with the conventional triplet, I will teach you, of course, how to employ them in many different ways, and variate them, but for the moment, let's just focus on putting them in and getting used to employing them into a tune. So taking the first part of the buying hunt, I'm gonna go through it now and I'm gonna add the triplets for you and um, I want you to, to, to play them uh, as, I, as I play them, learn where I put them and uh, learn, to, learn to play them in the same positions and um, then we'll uh, move on to the second part of the tune in the next lesson and we'll do the same thing. So here's the first part with the triplets. <laughs> I won't leave it at that. I'll play it phrase by phrase, just in case you find it a little bit difficult. I'm going to play it phrase by phrase now, and I'm going to add the triplets in again. I'll keep it at the same slow speed. You can work through. So we'll work through the first phrase or two, um, and I'll, I'll put the triplets in. So we'll, we'll work through the first uh, couple of bars. There's two triplets in the first couple of bars. The first one is on the very first note. The second one you'll hear is on an E note. So let's just focus on getting it up to there first. So starting from the A. Let's try that again. Moving on to the next phrase. And in that phrase, we have the triplet on the open A again, the very first note of that phrase. And we have it on the last note of the phrase, similar to the very first phrase, except this time the triplet on the last note lies on a D on the A string. I'll play it one more time, the second phrase. Okay, so when you've got that first part and the triplets confidently and you're happy with your progress, move on to the next part of the lesson where we teach the second part. But also try some uh, sequence exercises if you're, if you're struggling with the triplet. Try to play scales, for example, the D scale, but completely with triplets. For example, you can try them all with the down, up, down triplet. Down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down for each note. Or you can indeed try them with the up, down, up triplet. Up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up. Or a very very helpful method as well is to is to invert the triplet each time you play it so for example on the d note play down up down on the e note play up down up on the f sharp note play down up down on the g note play up down up and so on and you can try it with other scales g c whatever takes your fancy so as i say we'll see you in the next lesson when you're confident with the first